when I think about big time managers, folks, and big time innovators, I think of guys like our guest today. Uh, his skills in street marketing have earned him a reputation as one of the most clever marketing minds in the whole of the music business. Somewhere he also manages to find time to manage some of the great rock bands and artists of our time. For the last uh, 15 years, me and my friend have been getting together four or five times a year for breakfast right down here in Beverly Hills in one of our favorite little delis called Nate and Al's. Uh, whenever we get together, we talk about business, we share heartaches, we cry, we laugh, we bitch, but we always have fun. Today, we decided to move our breakfast right here to our offices here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest and good friend, David Pino Benveniste. Here. Ladies What's and up? gentlemen, there he is. All yeah. right. <sighs> we made it, and I guess we're streaming live now. Don't you love technology? Is that right? It's all working. It's right all now? working right now. Wow! Exactly. Magically, you know, it's funny, Bino. How many times did that happen in your career as a manager, where five minutes before a big show, a big something, the power goes out. Everything's been working great, yeah. right? Everybody's in a good mood, and then boom! Yeah. Mood swing happens right there. It's 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 Murphy's law. It is Murphy's law. You've seemed to have handled it, and, and it hasn't weathered you quite as you much know, as it's, it's weathered like, me. I got good genes. You know, I'm staying away from the Botox. <laughs> My hairline's okay. I'm happy. You're, yeah, you're you're a handsome man, I'll say, thank folks, you. in a in a friendly kind of way here. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you for helping out here, today. Cheers. Dean. I always like to give back and help the youngsters. Yeah. It's all for the fans, folks. The youngsters. Uh, this idea of giving back, I know, is not something totally new to you. You've been doing it for a while. We've passed in the hallways at a local university a couple times here. Yes. Um, talk about your, you, you, you work at SE or you've done some speaking at USC yeah, many times. Yeah, you know, I try and go down there a couple times a year and, and talk to the classes, the music business classes about management, do a, like a sort of a Q&A with them and talk to them about some of my, ex, you know, real experiential stuff because they learn the curriculum through the books. Mm -hmm. But it's nice for guys like us to go down there and talk about the actual application of Tour budgets, touring, the ups, the downs, A and R, breaking a band, uh, the difficulties in breaking a band, the uh, both the perils as well as the gratification when it does happen. So yeah. just sort of real time, uh, you know, knowledge for these kids outside of the books and in between the books. It's the other stuff that I think that when they graduate and people like us explain that to them, it's going to really help and fortify them. Yeah, it's funny when I was just starting off in the business, I I, I didn't read a lot of, you know literature stuff. I was always reading stories about people who'd done something great and, um, and was, was fortunate enough in my career to have some guys that took me under their wing you know, early on and that acted as, as mentors. And I think that's kind of what we're attempting to do with the site. Let me ask you a question. When you were first starting off, and, 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 and you were obviously a music fan, no doubt, um, when did you first start thinking that you wanted to be in the music business? You know, for, for me, it wasn't so much about uh, wanting to be in the business per se. I think I sort of just followed my nose, if you will, and just, I was always a music fan. I always loved music, and uh, I just had an affinity for going to shows and, and listening to music. When I was a kid, I was the one with the posters on the wall, all the, you know, the 80s metal with the Us Festival, and Motley Crue, and Dawkins and Judas Priest, and before that, it was ska, and mm -hmm. before that, it was punk. So it's like... I've always been super uh, enamored and, and attracted to the notion of culture around music mm -hmm. and fascinated by it, and I love music, so I think that naturally I started to just go into it, and um, I just, after I graduated USC, I just started going to shows, and I think it naturally happened. It just happened, and I, and I, and I knew it was right for me, and I said, let's do this.